Aviation Talk, a pilot project launched by a group of passionate aviation lovers to bring the inside story of different segments of aviation. And to launch this, we interviewed none other than Mr. Chandan Ratnam, who is the founder and president of Lion Air and Asian Aviation Center. He is also a renowned filmmaker who has won several local and international awards. Thank you, Mr. Chandran Ratna, for joining us today. Okay, in our first episode of Aviation Talk. Okay. Okay. So, how would you like to introduce yourself? Well, introduce myself. Let's see. I'm just a guy who had a passion for a few things in life. Okay. And I exercised my passion. Okay. Okay. My first love was motion pictures, movies, okay. and uh, the second was uh, aviation. Yes. And uh, the third, I don't want to mention it. I'm joking. Uh, third one was uh, was were horses. Horses. I love horses. Okay. Uh, racing horses. Okay. Racing horses. Right. So I was able to accomplish my my three passions, and I'm very. I consider myself very lucky. You are. You are. Very lucky and happy. Okay, so that's an amazing start. Okay. Thank you. So then uh, you said that you had three passions yeah. and then out of that the second one was aviation. Yes. So why yes. did you have a passion <coughs> for this aviation industry? Yeah, when I heard that uh, in the old days there were planes coming landing here every day. So a uh, plane coming through Atmanana was an event. <laughs> so when I find out that a plane is coming I used to get my get into my father's car, the driver and I used to come down to Atmanana and take a look at it and I was fascinated. Yes. But the real reason later on how I got into aviation is quite interesting because I was making a movie in Kandy called Iron Triangle. It was a, it was a uh, Vietnam war film and, uh, and uh, uh, they, we needed four helicopters so we rented it from the Air Force okay. and uh, we were shooting in, in, in uh, Kandy and my family was in uh, Colombo. Then I noticed that I suddenly realized that these Air Force pilots, they bring the plane in the morning, and these helicopter pilots bring the plane to, uh, bring the helicopter to Kandy in the morning and they go back at about 5 o'clock yeah. and come back the next day. So I thought, why can't I also go home? Yes. So then I started hitching a ride and I used to go to Colombo every day, come back in the morning. And that I then, I got spoiled. I fell in love. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't a girl, but I fell in love with the helicopter and I couldn't get it out of my system. So what did I do? I had a friend of mine in Texas, in, uh, in uh, somewhere in Texas, Dallas, I think. And I heard that the, the factory for, for Bell helicopters was in that area. So I went with him, I went to visit him and I went to the Bell factory. And I they said, uh, what are you here for? I said, I came here to buy an, a helicopter. And then they took me around, showed me the helicopters, and I asked them how much it was. And then of course I almost fell down, because I can't even think of that money. So that was in my heart, so I fell in love with the helicopter. Then we started Lion Air, and when we were, uh, when we were flying Lion Air, we, did, we were going to 10 destinations within the island, 10 destinations at that time. And so one, one weekend I took my family to, uh, to Trincomalee. China Bay, China Bay, and uh, uh, we had we had uh, planes, but we had no hangar, okay. we had no office, we had nothing. Yeah. We just kept our, our spare parts under the table. Okay. It was so, and, and we were standing in the hot sun, and I said, "Come on, we should get a hangar of some sort." Then I saw a helicopter in front of this hangar. Okay. So I said, "Whose is that?" And they. They said it is owned by such and such. So I said, find out more about it. When I came back from, from my trip to uh, China Bay with my family, they told me that this is for sale. Wow. Now, all I saw was a helicopter. I didn't know, I, a true story, I didn't know what was inside here. I had no idea. And I dare not go inside. So I said, it's for sale. I said, they, uh, give me the name of the guy who's selling it. So I sent my family home. And I got into the car and I went straight to meet him. And I heard, I did some research, I heard there were some Australians here to buy it. And they had quoted X million rupees and he wanted a little more. So I thought, how do I make this deal fast? 
We'll use the figures, they are not the right figures, but let's say that he wanted 60 million. Okay. And uh, these guys have offered 55 million. Okay. So now they are negotiating. Yes. I went and I told them, you know something? This is not worth 60 million, this is worth 65 million. He looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> I said, will you sell it to me for 65 million? He said, of course, shook hands, made the deal. And I bought, bought this CDE, it was called CDE. Now I had no money. I didn't have 65 million. <laughs> so I went to my office in, um, a true story. Yeah. Yeah. I went to my office, uh, my film office, and I told my partner, do we have any money? He said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm going to buy a helicopter. He said, you're crazy. I said, yes, I know I'm crazy. Fine. Do we have any money? He scraped from all our accounts, he scraped one million dollars. I said, how the hell am I going to pay 65 million dollars? So this, this is what I did. My father had always told me, if there's something you really want, and there's only one of a kind, you got to take it. Yes. You know, like you meet a beautiful girl and uh, if you want her, you better go for it, right? Okay. So then I got a cashier's check for that one million. Yeah. And I went back to him on the same evening and I gave it to him because these things can go awry, yeah. you know, they can, they can fade away. I gave him the million uh, cashier's check, shook hands, and then I said, can you give me a little time to pay you? He said, how, what, how long do you want? He said, uh, I said, 60 days. Oh, yeah. One thing I learned about the aviation industry, when they want to get out of the industry, they want to get out. They want to get out fast. I don't know why. <laughs> True story. They want, when they, when, they, when they want to get out of aviation, I don't know what it is, they won't even come near a Ratmalan or near a plane. Uh, you know? Yeah. yeah so, know. Uh, believe me, yeah. you, you check it out and see. People are like that. So anyway, then I managed to uh, uh, do some business okay. and raise the money and I, and, I, and I paid him his 65 million. But here's the interesting part. So, when I'm not, when I'm not paid, as far as he's concerned, he has sold it. Yeah. He doesn't want to go near this hangar. Yes. He, and so these guys are calling me and saying, Sir, uh, there is a hire. I said, what hire? I said, don't talk to me. I don't own it here. And I, I, then one day, the owner says, Chandran, I got to take you over and introduce you to the guys. I said, yeah, but I, I haven't bought it here. He said, no, no, you bought it. Come in. Brought me and introduced me to these guys. And lo and behold, what did I find here? Two helicopters. I thought I only paid for one helicopter. There were two helicopters, there were two Cessna 152s and the Seneca. So I felt I made a good deal. So here I am and then of course we started Lion Air and uh, Lion Air did very well and we had uh, you know four aircraft for 16 flights a day until uh, unfortunately our plane was shot down. And then uh, I think I think the government government made a big mistake. They banned flying. You don't necessarily ban flying just because an aircraft was shut down. You make some remedial action. You don't stop the industry. So we suffered a big hit. But since we are passionate about the industry, we we had over 60 employees. I didn't let one of them even leave. And we kept them even there was no business. But then they became lecturers and they became, um, we, start, we enlarged our, our academy, maintenance, yes. uh, design, yes. and uh, also pilot flight training. Yes. All right, so that's an amazing story. Okay. So then. Uh, True story. True story. <laughs> so, okay. So you said that, you know, you fell in love with aviation and then, you know, so after that point yeah. about, you know, coming into aviation, when you came here, you had, you know, not just bought one helicopter, but then an entire fleet. Okay, so how did you manage your you know personal life while being in this industry and then you know your film career? So how did you manage all of this? You see, when you have these passions, you can't control. <laughs> you have to go forward. No, no, I am am uh, uh, very very lucky. I have my wife who is the MD, yes. and she is also interested in aviation, yeah. and uh, she's running the entire show now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, earlier on, I had my I have I have five kids. I love making movies, you know, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm the happiest when I'm 
on the set making a movie. But I must tell you one thing. Another great feeling I feeling I get or satisfaction is when these people graduate from our school. Yes. It's a lovely, lovely feeling. I'll give you one instance. I was in Dubai one day and I was flying and somebody from the ground started shouting, Sir, sir, sir. I looked down, there are four guys, I don't know who they are. And they said, Asian Aviation Center, Asian Aviation Center in Dubai. So, you know, I felt really good. And another good feeling I get is when I'm flying on a big plane and the pilot comes, they, they find that I'm on the flight. And the pilot comes by and says, the guy who's, my, my life is in his hands. Yeah. The guy who's flying the plane. He comes and says, sir, I graduated, I, I started in your school. Yes. And that gives me a great satisfaction. And the other big deal for me is when I see my planes flying there with my logo. That ultimate happiness. <laughs> you know something? You can't stay in this. You can't stay in this business without being really passionate. So yeah. what are your plans for the future? In in what in what area? In all aspects. If you oh like. yeah, I'm, I'm I'm planning on making some movies. Okay. And uh, the COVID thing. Yes. Was. I can't say wonderful. <laughs> because we lost too many lives. Yes. But the COVID thing gave us, put the brakes on, yes. gave us time to think. Yeah. And I thought in different directions. I had plenty of time to think. Yeah. One is, my, um, my next ambition as far as aviation is to uh, start a regional airline. Okay. And that is very, very important to me. Yes. That's number one. Then number two, as far as uh, uh, film business is concerned, I'm having a platform because people are not good at the movies. Yeah. They're watching it on the iPhone. So I'm catering for that. It's called Tonto Flix, coming out in October. It's going to show Sri Lankan films to the diaspora all over the world. Amazing. That's my next plan. Amazing. So we wish you all the best. Thank for you. Both the domestic airline that you're planning to start and then your film industry career. Uh, so what would you like to tell the youngsters, the budding aviators? Have a dream and go for it. Don't stop because a lot of people stop just before they get there. They work so hard and go right up to the winning post, but they quit just before the winning post. So don't give up, go for it. Yes, all right. So thank you, Mr. Chandran Ratnam, for your Welcome. Nice Thanks of you to come here and talk to me. Yes, I guess so. Uh, yeah, I, I, wish, I wish you guys luck also. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so then have a pleasant day and enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye.